How's it going, people? I've been doing pretty good. A little busy. I haven't done any videos in a while. Thought I'd try a little something. Uh, I think it's Japanese. All I know is you can't crush these cans. <laughs> so don't even try. It's like they're made out of, I don't know, cast iron. <laughs> the, the cans. been a long day. <sighs> oh, that's nice. Mm. It's been a little while. Where was I? Section 61 of Doctrine and Covenants. Pay attention, it's going to be important on that. And they found out where the next Holy Land is Missouri. Really? It's written down here, so it's got to be true. Revelation given through Joseph Smith, the prophet, on the bank of the Missouri River. Uh, Mick Ilwain's Bend, specifically. Um, August 12th, 1831. The prophet and ten elders had traveled down the river in canoes. They didn't walk on water or anything, you know. <laughs> uh, on the first day of the journey, many dangers were experienced. Experience. I hope they tell us about it. A little action. A nice change of pace. Uh, Elder William W. Phelps in, day, uh, in daylight vision saw the destroyer riding in power upon the face of the waters. Maybe the Missouri River even. Yes. All right. That must have been scary. <laughs> See History of the Church, Volume 1, page 203. And if you do, let me know how it was. I'll get there eventually. First, got to find a copy of it. Elders not to travel swiftly upon the river, thus losing opportunity to preach. Elders had been permitted to come thus far by boat, that they might bear record of the power of the destroyer over the waters. Those who came later to Zion to be warned thereof. Attention of the First Presidency needed in the organized branches. Special labor of declaring the gospel to non-members left to the elders, they're too appointed. Uh, one, behold, and hearken unto the voice of him who has all power, who is from everlasting to everlasting. Doesn't something have to come to an end before you can connect it to a beginning? How do you connect eternities? From eternity to eternity. Sounds like a great soap opera title. All right. All right. <laughs> from everlasting to everlasting. Even Alpha and Omega, which is beginning and end, which supply kind of doesn't sound very everlasting if it it's a beginning and an ending. The beginning and the end, in case you don't know Greek, they just translated it for you. Two. Behold, verily, thus saith the Lord unto you, O ye elders of my church. 
who are assembled upon this spot, whose sins are now forgiven you. For I, the Lord, forgive sins. Isn't that just so fortunate? <laughs> and am merciful unto those who confess their sins with humble hearts. Three, but verily I say unto you that it is not needful for this whole company of mine elders to be moving swiftly upon the waters. Whilst the inhabitants of either side are perishing in unbelief. Got a cure. Uh, anyway, yeah. um, for nevertheless, I suffered it that ye might bear record. Behold, there are many dangers upon the waters, and more especially hereafter. Five, for I. The Lord have decreed in mine anger many destructions upon the waters. Yeah, he made that white water because he was pissed. <sighs> upon the waters, yea, and especially upon these waters really pissed at the Missouri River. Six. Nevertheless, all flesh is in mine hand, and he that is faithful among you shall not perish by the waters, unless you do. And it's, you must have had a lapse. That's what happened. Otherwise, he wouldn't have drowned like he did. He's going to hell, I guess. If you drown, you're damned. Damn you. All right. Seven. Wherefore, it is expedient that my servant Sidney Gilbert and my servant William W. Phelps be in haste upon their errand and mission. Apparently, they got a, one of each. Eight. Nevertheless, oh, not yet. Almost. Nevertheless, I would not suffer that ye should part until ye are chastened. For ye were, wait, part until ye were chastened. For all your sins that might be one that ye might not perish in wickedness, especially in the waters. There's some dangerous shit going on there. It's about sin. Yeah. Excuse me. You can't crush these cans. I, uh, I dented it. Damn. <laughs> Buy it just for the can. It's actually a damn good beer. You probably already knew that. All right. Nine. And now, verily, I say, behoveth me, 
that ye should part. Wherefore, let my servants, Sidney Gilbert and William W. Phelps, take their former company and let them take their journey in haste. Just this one time. That they may fill their mission. And through faith they shall overcome. Ten. And in so much as they are faithful, they shall be preserved. And I, the Lord, will be with them. Eleven. And let the residue take that which is needful for clothing. Twelve. Let my servant, Sidney Gilbert, take that which is not needful with him. As you shall agree. Who would? All right. Thirteen. And now. Behold, for your good I gave unto you a commandment concerning these things. And I, the Lord, will reason with you, as with men in days of old. Back in the magic golden age of the golden bough. <laughs> Uh. Oh, by the way, LibriVox.org is doing the Book of Mormon, public domain, free MP3 download. And they got the Golden uh, Bow also already. Unabridged, free, public domain. Man, go get that shit. All right. Fourteen. Behold, I, the Lord, in the beginning blessed the waters. But in the last days, by the mouth of my servant John, a lunatic from Patmos, I curse the waters. Fifteen. Wherefore, the days will come... <coughs> that no flesh shall be, shall be safe upon the waters. Rogue waves, and whirlpools, and water spouts. And I don't know, maybe the Bermuda Triangle and sea monsters, right? That's where it came from. God was mad. Sixteen. And it shall be said in days to come that none is able to go up to the land of Zion upon the waters. So we'll build a bridge over them, so what? But he that is upright in heart, the, the waters will probably part for them. <laughs> Seventeen. And, as I, the Lord, in the beginning cursed the land, he's cursing a lot of stuff, damn it, even so, in the last days have I blessed it, and it's time for the use of my saints, that they may partake of the fatness thereof. Uh, Eighteen. And now, I give unto you a commandment that what I say unto you, I say unto all. So listen up that you shall forewarn your brethren concerning these waters. 
He must have had a scare on his little canoe trip. <laughs> Whoa, shit! That was almost fun. We better warn people. <laughs> that day come not in journeying upon them, lest their faith fail, and they are caught in snares. You wouldn't want that to happen, you know, those little, those little lapses where there's a fail in your shields. Shields are down. Engineering. <laughs> Get with it. <laughs> yeah. Alright. 19. I, the Lord, have decreed, and the destroyer writeth upon the face thereof. And I revoke not the decree. 20. I, the Lord, was angry with you yesterday. But today mine anger is turned away. And a little mini, a little rhyme and a haiku. Cute little couple up there. All right. Bumper sticker, dude. <laughs> anyway. Uh, 21. <laughs> Wherefore? <laughs> Let those concerning whom I have spoken that should take their journey in haste. Again, I say unto you, let them take their journey in haste. If you gotta, you gotta. 22. And it mattereth not unto me very much. It must have mattered a little if you've said it at all. <laughs> After a little, if it so be that they fill their mission, get her done. Whether they go by water or by land, let this be as it is made known unto them according to their judgments hereafter. 23. And now, concerning my servants, <coughs> Sidney Ridgedead, Joseph Smith Jr., and Oliver Cowdery, let them come not again upon the waters. It was scary. <laughs> Save it be upon the canal. While journeying unto their houses, or in other words, they shall not come upon the waters to journey, save it be by the canal. In other words, they said the same thing twice in one verse. <sighs> ah, yummy. Very nice. Very nice. Twenty-four. Behold, I, the Lord, have appointed a way for the journeying of my saints. And behold, this is the way that after they leave the canal, they shall journey by land, inasmuch as they are commanded to journey and go up unto the land of Zion in Missouri. 25. <coughs> but first. 25. And they shall do like unto the children of Israel. What, cut the tips of their dicks off? What? <laughs> um, <laughs> pitching their tents, by the way. That's what they meant. They probably build a tent out of foreskins. 26. And behold, this commandment you shall give unto all your brethren. 27. Nevertheless, 
unto whom is given power to command the waters unto him it is given by the Spirit to know all his ways. 28. Wherefore, let him do as the Spirit of the Lord commandeth him, whether it be upon land or upon the waters. As it remaineth with me to do hereafter. 29. And, of, and unto you it is given the course for the saints, or the way for, for the saints of the camp of the Lord to journey. Okay? 30. And again, verily, I say unto you, my servants, Sidney Richton, Joseph Smith, Jr., and Oliver Cowdery. Joey likes it in the middle, doesn't he? Hey, it's okay if it's three-way. Just saying. All right. <laughs> Shall not open their mouths in the congregation of the wicked until they arrive in Cincinnati. 31. And in that place they shall lift up their voices unto God against that people, yea, unto him whose anger is kindled against their wickedness. A people who are well nigh ripened for destruction. 32. And from thence let them journey for the congregations of their brethren. For their labors even now are wanted more abundantly. Yeah among them who are among the congregations of the wicked. 33. And now, concerning the residue, eh, not really any. That wasn't worth it. Um, let, their, let him journey declare the word among the congregations of the wicked inasmuch as it is given. 34. And inasmuch as they do this, they shall rid their garments and they shall be spotless before me. Wait a minute. Rid their garments. Does that mean like take them off? I mean, in what context? This would have been interesting. It just gave us a little more info. Somehow I think this has to do with that whole blood spatter thing on their clothes and getting it out real quick by washing it in the blood of the lamb. Alright. 35. And let them journey together, or two by two, as seemeth them good. Only let my servants Reynolds Cahoon and my servant Samuel H. Smith, with whom I am well pleased, be not separated until they return to their homes. And this is for a wise purpose in me. 36. And now, verily, I say unto you, and what I say unto one, I say unto all. Be of good cheer, little children. For I am in your midst, and I am not and I have not forsaken you. Thirty-seven. 
He's just not doing jack, that's all. And inasmuch as you have humbled yourselves before me, the blessings of the kingdom are, are yours. That magic kingdom in the sky, where everything is divine. 38. Gird up your loins and be watchful and be sober, looking forth for the coming of the Son of Man. For he cometh in an hour you think not. 39. Pray always that you enter not into temptation. You need to pray for a thing like that, huh? It's kind of artificial, ain't it? Uh, that you may abide the day of his coming. You'll be worthy. You just held out long enough. <laughs> if it works that way. <laughs> if any of this bullshit is real. And obviously, since I call it bullshit, I don't think it is. But please, chime in, convince me, save my soul, if I got one. Uh, that you may abide the day of his coming, that's JC, whether in life or in death, even so, amen, and that's for 61, and kind of an abortion, but that's a take. <laughs> Let me know if you learned something. Uh, seems to me that they had a little problem with uh, the Missouri River. Must be some hairy curves, some hairy white water. Maybe a waterfall or two. That's the destroyer, maybe, huh? I don't know. God did it. God was mad. Anyway, time it. Peace the fuck out. Have a wonderful, whatever the fuck it is you're having.